After three years of war, the familiar outlines of London are much the same. But there are many new and unfamiliar sights in the streets. Affairs of state in Whitehall have a new urgency. For here is the organizing center of the British Commonwealth and the free world at war. Allied servicemen have settled down pretty quickly and for the time being feel that London is their home. Under Nelson's column in Trafalgar Square one sees the uniforms of 20 different nations. London thrills to see the growing forces in her midst and welcomes them just as one September morning in 1942, she welcomed the first American troops as they marched through the city. The cinemas of Leicester Square are open, but precautions for the safety of London are maintained. Emergency water tanks spell out the defiant symbol of victory. And though scarred, London still presents a smiling face. Ruins there are, but there is also new life. Out of the danger has arisen a great citizen army, a home guard. Clerks, factory hands, bank managers are trained in the very streets they may one day have to defend. Weapons are made from the railings London has sacrificed. Children like the idea. A park without railings reminds them of the open country. In 1942, even children helped with the salvage campaigns. Today, every man, woman and child has a job to do. Youths under military age give up their weekends to train in the park for future service with the RAF. Across the grass, soldiers and workers take an hour or two off. They can relax with a free mind because others are always on the alert. No petrol to waste means holidays at home. And this summer, all the fun of the fair was brought right into the heart of London. Music 
Holidays for some, but duty for others. Everyone is growing food wherever they can. Acres of allotments have been cut into London's parks and gardens. Exhibition allotments show beginners how to get the most out of their plots. And food is grown in all sorts of unexpected places. On a roof garden, high above the city streets, vegetables grow amongst the flowers. Men of the National Fire Service make good use of a battered basement. Allotments and pig clubs ease the food situation. And rationing ensures that everyone gets a fair share, no matter where they shop. Communal feeding is a wartime economy. British restaurants and canteens have been established all over London. This was once a college. Now, 2,000 lunches are served here daily. Labour is voluntary, the meals are supplied at cost, and all types of Londoners take advantage of the service. Mealtime in wartime is also recreation time. Inside the National Gallery, world-famous musicians give luncheon concerts of classical music. Whilst on the steps and lawn outside, office workers eat their midday meal. And in factory canteens, a laugh and a song at mealtime renews the workers' energies for more long hours at the machines. Women mobilized into war work, lock up their homes and hand over their children to communal nurseries while they go off to do their jobs. While the mothers work, the children play and grow strong. The most striking change in London's life has been brought about by the mobilization of women. In Downing Street, the efforts of the people are coordinated into terms of world strategy at the house of the Prime Minister. Here the statesmen and service chiefs of the United Nations meet in the cabinet room to set their seal on the covenants which pledge them to the common cause. London in 1942 is the hub of the Allied war effort. And Buckingham Palace is the background for a display of Britain's growing strength.
Dusk falls over London. With darkness comes the blackout. Gone for the present are the bright lights of Leicester Square and Piccadilly. But behind the blackout is warmth and companionship. songs, while the night shifts are taking over in the factories. The machines must never stop. And all the time, the defenders are on guard. In basements and cellars, the civil defense forces settle down to all night duty. If the raiders come again, London will be ready. And as his turn comes round, every able-bodied Londoner stays after work to fire watch. He is the ordinary citizen one of the worldwide brotherhood of men and women who will work and watch and fight until the lights go up again over a world freed from want and fear. Here is the organizing center of the British Commonwealth and the free world at war. Nelson's column in Trafalgar Square, one sees the uniforms of 20 different nations. servicemen have settled down pretty quickly and for the time being feel that London is their home. After three years of war, the familiar outlines of London are much the same, but there are many new and unfamiliar sights in the streets. Affairs of state in Whitehall have a new urgency. 